The anti-France protests in Pakistan reached its peak after the arrest of the leader of Tehreek e Labbaik Pakistan, Saad Rizvi, earlier this month. A cleric by profession, Saad Rizvi was arrested after he threatened the Pakistani government with countrywide protests if it did not remove the ambassador of France for the French president defending the cartoons of Prophet Muhammad, therefore putting Pakistani government in a very complicated position in which it had to make a difficult choice between its state's foreign policy and its state's religion. The TLP has now called off its protests in exchange for a vote in Pakistan's National Assembly, that is, its parliament, regarding the French envoy. But the situation in Pakistan had gotten so violent that newspapers described it as warlike, and some news channels even called it a quote unquote civil war. Civil war. Civil war. Civil war. Like Although I won't go that far and call these protests a civil war, but this political religious mess in Pakistan clearly shows us why having a state religion is such a bad idea. But before I get there, let's see how the situation in Pakistan got to where it is today. In October 2020, French President Emmanuel Macron refused to condemn the cartoons of Prophet Muhammad in France. He said this during the memorial of Samuel Paty, a school teacher who was killed by Islamic extremists for showing the cartoon of Prophet Muhammad to its students in a class of freedom of expression, thus inviting condemnation from across the Islamic world. There were massive protests against Macron and appeals were made to boycott bench goods in Turkey, Syria, Bangladesh and even India. In Pakistan too, people came out on the streets in large numbers and in solidarity with the protesters, the Pakistani parliament passed a resolution to recall its ambassador from France, only to realize later that they didn't have any ambassador in Paris. In November 2020, the TLP marched from Rawalpindi to Islamabad demanding the expulsion of French ambassador to Pakistan and breaking ties with France. But to understand this episode fully, we need to know a bit more about the TLP and its relationship with the Pakistani army. The Tehreek e Labbaik Pakistan is a conservative political party created in 2017 by Khadim Hossein Rizvi. An Islamic cleric. It is said that initially the TLP was actively supported by the ISI and the Pakistani army to humiliate and destabilize the then Nawaz Sharif government to make way for Imran Khan as a new Prime Minister of Pakistan. There are clips in which a senior Pakistani army official is seen distributing money among TLP protesters who were then protesting against Nawaz Sharif's law minister for blasphemy, therefore confirming Pakistan's chief of the army staff Kamel Javed Bajwa's support the TLP as well as Imran Khan. But seven months after the election of Imran Khan as Pakistan's new Prime Minister, the TLP started another countrywide protest against the freeing of Asia Bibi, a Christian lady who was accused of blasphemy in 2010. During those protests, one of the TLP leaders made comments encouraging the Pakistani army to revolt against Bajwa. <laughs> Now, the only comment which is worse than blasphemy in Pakistan is a comment against the Pakistani army and the TLP said the unspeakable. Now, the TLP leader that made those comments later apologized. But in hindsight, we can say that soon after Imran Khan was elected, the TLP was of no particular use to the army and the Frankenstein's monster created by the Pakistani army began to show signs of disobedience. Since then, the power and influence of the TLP has grown exponentially among the Pakistani population. In November 2020, Khadim Rizvi sieged Islamabad and Rawalpindi with thousands of protesters, demanding the expulsion of the French envoy and the Pakistani government officially boycotting French products. Imran Khan agreed to all of TLP's demand and promised that within three months he will take a decision regarding the French ambassador. However, three days after TLP's demands were accepted, its leader Khadim Hussain Rizvi died, allegedly due to Covid, and his son Saad Rizvi became the leader of Tehreek e Labbaik Pakistan. In February 2021, three months after the original agreement with Khadim Rizvi, the government of Pakistan made another agreement with Saad Rizvi and promised that the matter will be placed before the parliament before 20th April 2021. On 12th April, Saad Rizvi reminded the Imran Khan government of the upcoming deadline. Saad was arrested on the same day, causing violent protests across Pakistan. The TLP members created mayhem across Karachi, Lahore, Rawalpindi and Islamabad. Highways were blocked, vehicles were burned, public property was destroyed, the police was attacked, the police attacked back and the conflict reached its peak when some TLP members took six police personnel hostage in Lahore. Following the violence, the TLP was banned on grounds of terrorism, and the French government advised its citizens and diplomats to temporarily leave the country. The TLP got massive support from the Pakistani population, who are genuinely angry at the French for insulting their prophet and diluting Islamic values in France, and they feel that expelling the French envoy is the least their government could do. 
Imran Khan in a televised statement tried to explain to its population that why expelling the French ambassador is such a bad idea. When we break the ambassador of France, it means that we break the relationship with the European Union. What does it mean? That the exports of textile exports are in the European Union. So it means that our textile exports are finished. It means that the exports of However, the very next year, the Imran Khan government took a complete U-turn and gave in to the demands of the now-declared terrorist organization. Pakistan's Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid announced that they have successfully negotiated with the now-banned TLP and agreed to put the resolution regarding the French ambassador to vote on 20th April. They also agreed to free the 600 arrested TLP members, in exchange for which the TLP stopped its protest. Although the voting on TLP's demands has been postponed twice now, experts believe that if the resolution was put to vote, it would have surely been passed. Because the Pakistani MPs, regardless of their political parties, have no choice but to condemn any insult to the profit of the state's religion. This entire episode had put the Pakistani leadership in a very complicated position, where if they agreed to implement TLP's demands, they lose international trade and credibility. And if they don't, they lose power domestically. And this is why having a state religion, especially for a democracy, is such a bad idea. For starters, there is a fundamental difference between religion and statecraft that makes them incompatible with each other. One of the primary aims of religion is to instill good behavior and moral values among people. Values like thou shalt not steal or love thy neighbor, so that there is harmony in the society. Statecraft, on the other hand, is about survival. Survival of the state. And whenever things come down to human survival, God, along with all its moral values and ideals, disappears. Pakistan is an Islamic democracy, and unlike its neighbor Iran, where Islam was imposed upon its citizens, the people of Pakistan themselves chose an Islamic country for themselves. As a result, the people of Pakistan expect and demand its government to uphold Islamic values, and therefore it is understandable for them to hold their leaders accountable if they do not take any action against the French for insulting the prophet of the state's religion. However, leaders in Pakistan, both elected and selected, know better. They know that the world and even Pakistan does not run on Islamic values and therefore they will have to trade with the French if they want the fragile economy to survive. Let me give you another example for this. Recently, the UK's parliament called out on China for the genocide of Uyghur Muslims. I am sure that the Pakistani leaders are really angry on China as well. But they can't say anything because they know the survival of Pakistan depends on China. Therefore, the best case scenario for any country is to have no state religion. It keeps things simple and allows a country to take decisions on what she thinks is best for herself. And if a country has a state religion, such as Saudi Arabia or England, in that case, it is important for the state to be stronger than the religion, so that it can take effective decisions. In European countries such as the UK or Greece, where even though state has a religion, i.e. Christianity, the religion there is weak because people of these countries are either secular or not that religious, therefore allowing the governments of these countries to freely take decisions. On the other hand, in Arab countries where people are really religious, the governments are very strong. Dictatorships, essentially. And therefore, because of being a dictatorship, an Islamic country like UAE can allow alcohol in its bars to promote business and tourism in its country. And Saudi Arabia can improve ties with one of its arch enemies, Israel, without much public backlash. Pakistan, on the other hand, is an Islamic Republic with a very religious population that is neither a strong dictatorship nor a good democracy. Whenever the Pakistani army takes over in the country, it tries to go back to democracy to avoid US sanctions. And whenever there is a democracy in Pakistan, the government, the political parties and the armies spreads religious fanaticism through propaganda or by promoting organizations like the Taliban and TLP to achieve its strategic as well as political objectives. As a result, strengthening the religious sentiments in the country. And as we saw in the recent anti-France protests, how a religious state with a deeply religious population can put itself in a complicated position where every decision is a bad decision. Therefore, if Pakistan needs to improve its situation now, it either needs to increase control over its citizens by becoming a strong dictatorship like Saudi Arabia, or we can release the sentiments in its country if it wants to stay a democracy. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for coming out to my vlog. I'll see you soon.